Utopian Chronicles Multidimensions Episode 7 The Androsian Empire Enters the New Dimensional Planes The time had come to put an end to the enemy and put the Androsian strategy into play. Following the layout which Thursday and Sophia gave them, the city made their move. They found the encampment where the Mark Gods and the Kenta Mechs would be. President Vok and his men hid around the thicket just waiting to attack the enemy, but they know his food pot was in camp as well. Falk went to consult with his Prime Minister, Richie, on their next move. Falk, what should we do, Richie? Well, he's a commander of the enemy army, so if we want to divert their attention to us, then what better way than to have a commander after us? Falk, bing, commander the troops. All right, men, charge! The city army moved like the wind to give their foe little time to react or to fire a single round. Fu was impressed by their attack. This was his first real battle, and he was determined that to cut many of his foes. Fupa, come on, Josica, be my blade. Fark and Fupa crossed blades. It was an all-out war. Richie then saw that they had done enough to the enemy, so he ordered a full-scale retreat. Fu popped his lid that they would just hit and run like that. Not realizing that this was a trap, Fu ordered his men to give chase. The Anjosgan plan was working. Now more can come without Chevalier's main forces even confronting them. Next, Zernine and her unit were marching in the forest to confront her brother as part of the plan. While Zerlene and Anina walked ahead, of the army, Natasha and Sonoma walked close behind. Sonoma could, couldn't help but to notice how well fit Sonin was from the back, and he was staring. Natasha noticed this and said, Natasha elbowing in, Hey, stop drooling over my mom. Sonoma whispering, Hey now, I'm, I'm looking at Sonin, not your mom. Natasha, well she's my brother's mother, so I hold her as mine as well. Sonoma, well your father has some good taste in women. Natasha walks off upset. Hmm. Sonoma puzzled. What? Not the way. Alina, quiet you two. We're here. The forces stop as they no, uh, no overlooking now overlooked Weasler's gang's main camp. Sernin, I will go on ahead to meet with my brother. I'll give you the signal when it's time to attack. Natasha. You can't go alone, my lady. Selene, okay, I'll take your shield and sword with me as backup to guard my rear. Natasha, well, that's all he's been knocking at this whole entire time, rolling her eyes. Selene, sorry, what was that? Natasha, panicked. Oh, nothing, nothing, it's nothing. So no more. Let's go, my lady. As the two left to go ahead, Natasha's mother, Alina, could notice that something was wrong. But she chose not to say anything because it wasn't right time to ask. Selene and Sonoma arrived at Weasel's camp and was greeted by Shanice, who ran up and hugged up. Shanice, sir, you have returned. I'm so glad to see you again. Oh, who's this cute friend? Winks. Sonoma blushes. blushes. Selene, he's my husband's daughter's bodyguard. Shanice sadly says, oh, so you're still with him, huh? Jolene, yes, Shani, Shanice, so I guess you're not coming back to us, right, Jolene, to a life of crime? No, I came to see that my brother surrenders to us, Shanice, you know that's not going to happen, right, so please leave before he notices you and your forces, and forces us to fight, Sonoma, if you care uh, for Lady Jolene so much, why don't you join us? And leave and live a better life. Chinese. Well you see. Well you see cutie. That's not that simple. Just then. Navi and Weasel spotted them. And Chinese said. Sorry sir. And then. To cut Zerlin. With a knife. So no one blocked it. With his thumb first. And the rest of the Angels kind of forces came out. And. The battle began. It was a firefight. No side was backing down. Then suddenly a giant. 
to Barney Beast came between the two forces. Weasler took a chance to escape, but he lost many of his supplies and his men were wounded. Shanae Navo, not capturing her brother, still called it a victory. The army marched back to the camp after dealing with the beast. Natasha had a chat with Sonoma about how he was looking at Zerni and was flirting with the enemy Shanice. So I picked, picked up on what Natasha's true motives were and were out of an uh, outburst and went to mess with her head and said, So no more. Well, I'm your protector, your shield and sword. Remember, last time I checked, I wasn't your man. Then walks off ahead with a smirk on his face. So Natasha stops in her tracks and thinks to herself, but you're my bestie. Doesn't he see by now that I love? Just when her mother walks by and taps her on the shoulder to see if she's okay. Natasha said, oh mother, I'm fine. Let's go. And Lena, okay. Just don't let your emotions get the best of you. We're at war, remember? Natasha, yes ma'am, I know. On the other side of the Plains. Andrew and his original Utopian forces arrived at Lavantra Castle to pay his old friend Kingsley a visit. Kingsley saw Andrew and his men coming from the distance and shouted, Kingsley, Andy! You, Andy, you, the one that betrayed our friendship for power. How dare you come here to do it again? Have you no honor? Andrew, with his hand of his chin while stopping on his white horse. Well, about that, I never saw you as a friend at all. You were just a minor acquaintance, but I used to help me get through school. Kingsley upset. What? An acquaintance? And a minor one at that? How could you? And you, you was, you was always so good at maths and math, and I needed help. You were a sad and arrogant back then. I wouldn't dream of calling you a friend if I was forced at gunpoint. Great on. Burn, Kingsley. No words. Benedict, how dare you insult my lord like that? Don't you know he is the lord of the bank run? Collagen, woman, get a clue. The universe has changed a lot since you lot were alive. He then explains about the royals and relinquished control of the Bankeron and that each power had their own galaxy and that the Baha were now in charge. Murky. Nonsense. I must be... I must be here. I must be hungry or something. You said that the Scotia and Royals, if the Finko fought each other and the Royals and Finko worked together to end my people? Ha! Huh. Moron. Arrogance is bliss indeed. Live in the past then, my lord. Let's attack them now, Andrew Jr. Someone's eager, father. Andrew, let's go and show those who live in, ing in ignorance of the times what happens to them. George! So the invasion had begun. The Androscan forces brought their heavy artillery and slender, 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 slender warships, which floated in the air real fast and fired lasers. The Royal Bank run were outmatched badly and so ordered a full retreat as Kingsley was still hurting from the revelation that his friendship with Andrew was nothing but a fantasy in his own head. Soon the enemy left and Levancho fell. Andrew then ordered Grayton and the uh, Tigran army to guard this very important place as the route of them would travel as the rest of them would travel the land to take it and to look for Chevalier and Chevalier's castle that was well hidden. Andrew told them that he was going to travel alone with Maverick as he did during the Five Kingdoms War. This was to lure out Chevalier. Neil would go to Zernian's group, Moron with the Chancellor's forces and Andrew said he would travel alone for a time. Collagen would go set up camp elsewhere as the Grand General Hugh promised to back up Grayton as soon as he can. So far, all was going well, according to the plan. <laughs>